Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Apollonia and I'm coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And today's tough talk is about is it true that black women are dating white men because they hate their own race? Yeah, that is our today's uh, topic. So why did I um, did I want to tackle this topic? Because it's a lot of things people are saying. Mostly black folks. I don't know why, you know, black folks have a problem with, I don't know, everything pretty much. It's not long ago when, you know, blacks and white were separated. There were toilets for black people. There were toilets for white people. There were swimming pool for white people. There were, you know, stuff for white people and stuff for black people. Then black people complained. And then that ended. Now we are free to mingle. And also, at this moment when we can mingle, black people have a problem too. So, I came up with this topic to, you know, um, talk about it. Is it true? Is it true? Uh, is it true when we date uh, out of race that we don't like our own race or we don't like black men or, you know, we don't like black culture or something? So, yeah, that is the thing today. Now... Most things that, these are the most things that actually people, let's say, I, I come from Africa, yeah? And I come from African village. So this is what um, I hear when a black woman from my village uh, dates a white guy. This is what I hear mostly from men. First thing, uh, you're dating white guy because of money, you know? That is very common with most people. Actually, most African Africans think uh, black women just want to date a white guy because of money, basically. Or uh, another thing is about um, citizenship, like for papers, you know, you want to go abroad and, you know, get married by a white guy and, you know, uh, get citizenship, which is, you know, true in some point. Um, you know, all those points are actually true. To some people, you know, people have different, um, different what do you call it? people have different what can I call it? Preferences. People have different, um, uh, what, what, what do you call this? Like, um, motive, actually, to dating out of race. But um, I don't think that is the main purpose, you know, sometimes. And according to me, my opinion, like, because I date um, a white person. So there are a lot of things that uh, um, we face when we date out of our race. That is, okay, there's a third thing that, you know, people talk about uh, when you date uh, outside race. Oh, you want uh, lighter-skinned uh, kids. That is very common. And, you know, some people will say, yeah, actually, I dated a white person to, you know, to get lighter-skinned kid, you know. Uh, this comes mostly because of colorism, because uh, the capital city of colorism is Africa, you know. Colorism is another topic of another day, but it really affects uh, Africa a lot, a lot. And that's why sometimes actually women just want to date a white person to uh, get a mixed kids. I don't know. But okay, what is another thing that uh, uh, people say when you date uh, outside race, you know, especially from Africa? Yeah. Uh, mm, what did, what did, where is my whatever? Uh, they will actually be like, oh. Why would you date a colonizer? Like these people colonized us. Why would you date you do date them? Like, you know, it would be like a year. And this comes from mostly uh older generation. They'll be like, Are you for real? Like these people colonize that. Why would you like love them and whatever? You know? What is another thing that comes when uh you date uh, outside race from you know what African people say? Uh-huh. You couldn't find a brother, you couldn't find a black guy to love you and whatever. That's another thing that people say. Another thing people say is that, ah, you just hate black people. You hate black men. Like, that's why. That's why you're dating a white guy, because you hate uh, black men and stuff. Another thing people say is like, oh, you're a hoe. Because <laughs> I don't know why uh, most, especially people from up country, they actually associate, like, dating a white guy, you know, like, mm, you just doing it for money. You're actually, you know, selling yourself to get the money you know probably help your family or i don't know but yeah those are like some assumptions that you know uh most black folks actually make when you date outside race especially when you come from the village like me so yeah 
I think I've uh, just summoned uh, a few, you know, things there where, you know, the things that are said when uh, when uh, we date outside the race, you know. The last thing is that, ah, if you date a pretty much older um, white guy, which they call ancestor, if you date an ancestor, <laughs> some blacks are just cruel. If you date an older person than you, it's like they say, ah, you're just waiting for him to die so that you take his property and stuff, so... Yeah, people really say, oh my God, so much stuff. But um, actually, the um, the reason is kind of different from that, you know. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to give this my opinion. Uh, I'm going to give my opinion uh, from the basis of my observation, my experience, and stories collected from different sources. Now, I'm old enough to be called an auntie. I'm 38 year, years old. I'm very proud. You know, I'm not those women who hide their age. I'm really, really happy um, to be 38. And you know what? That means experience. And that means why not like talk about topics like this, you know, to, I don't know, to, for, for other younger people to learn from this and stuff. So coming back to the topic. Why do uh, do African women really uh, date white people because they hate uh, their black race or because they hate uh, black people? This answer, you know, it's diverse. But from my opinion, why did I date a, a white guy? And from my childhood, was I planning to date a white guy or, you know, how was it? So let, let's start from my childhood, you know. I grew up in the village, you know. In village in Kenya, and um, from I'm from Kamba community, and uh, yeah, I went to primary school in village, and my observation in village, uh, how woman is treated in the village, pretty much broke my heart. Like, there's a lot of abuse towards women in the village, and when I was growing up, I remember saying I will never be married here. Like I had just washed my hands, like. From my village, like mm -mm. I'm not facing what I'm what I'm seeing. I saw women um, mistreated in so many ways, abused in so many ways, and um, from a, as a young girl, you know, watching uh, what men are doing to women, I kind of was disappointed to have such men, you know, that you know would abuse women like that. And like for example. Um, as a young girl, I was really bullied. If you, you notice, I have like kind of deeper voice for a woman, yeah? And when I was young, it was still deep. So um, young boys really, um, really abused me. I'll put, I'll put a picture of me um, around teenage, like let's say 13, 14. I'll put a picture there with me and two brothers and my sister, uh, my younger sister. You know, I'm in the middle between the two boys. So um i pretty much looked like a boy yeah i was kind of you know tomboy kind of stuff and then i had this heavy you know voice and when other girls were getting boyfriends for me they mocked me so i ended up growing up really fighting boys like oh my god i used to we used to watch this wrestling you remember those um programs <laughs> about fighting and stuff so i used to master those tricks and that's how i used to fight boys like seriously i used to fight boys and I don't know. I, I was rejected by black men since young age. Like, nobody wanted to date me, you know? Even, you know, even those, you know, when you're young and, you know, you're like, oh, I just want to try dating. I need to have a boyfriend, you know? I was just there admiring other girls, you know, having a boyfriend. And Romeo was just there, you know, tomboy and my heavy, heavy, <laughs> heavy voice. Actually, heavy voice really tormented me. I don't know. How, how, Young boys bullied me. It was my voice. It was my eyes. It was my, the way I looked like a boy. I don't know. You know, this is another photo of me uh, in um, in college. Still a tomboy, you know. And I was, I, I, I think I had, I started having that um, kind of black men don't like me since that young age, you know. So what else did I see in the village? Um, what some other men will do to women? The beating. Oh my God, abuse, like, most men will be nice until the dowry is paid. That's why I hate dowry. I don't know if, 
I, if I would plan to be married or if I would be married, I won't pay Dwari because for me, from village, what I saw Dwari does is that pretty much you give your child and your daughter and it's exchanged from goats and whatever. And the moment the guy got the goats and then you belong to him now, like you became property. Like you'd see like guys flip, like this guy was romantic and all of a sudden after the Dwari is paid, yeah, the, all those goats and I, I, I've actually never even tried to uh, check how much is it is to pay for my dowry or whatever. Like, I, I've never been interested because I've seen what happens when the dowry is paid. The woman will be beaten up. Yep, you'll be beaten up. Um, that's it. You cannot go back home. And you know what? There's a stigma in Africa whereby when the dowry is paid, that's it. You can't go back to your father's house. And even, oh my God. Listen to this uh, to this clip I'm going to put. This is exactly, listen to that old guy. He is Nigerian, but this is exactly what happened in my village. Like, this is how men treated women. Listen to that clip. I'll put it somewhere, I don't know, here or here, somewhere. About something, so she's not happy. Uh, she said she wanted her marriage to be like me and her grandmother, how it used to be. I say, yes, but, you know, you talk back to your husband, your grandmother, that those times she cannot talk back to me because I will slap her. And she, she's like, you used to slap grandmother. I said, yes, I slap, I will slap, I slap her. I mean, you can't talk back to me. Where is she going to go? She cannot go back to her father's place. You know, this time you have credit card, you, you have your own money. My grandmother did not have her own money. She has to ask me for money. That's how it is. And, you know, I don't want to talk about the other girl that I was sleeping with. <laughs> I mean, my grandmother know about her. What she is going to do? <laughs> leave? <laughs> she can't leave. Even if she goes. Uh, her father will send her back to my house and beg me. I'm the one that cheated. I'm the one that have extramarital affair and have two kids. Or maybe three, I can't remember. But they will beg me to take her back. I mean, this one, you know, man just cheat on you one or two times and you want to leave. For what? I think it's to take nonsense, not to take rubbish. See, now you both can just talk to your husband and, you know, before I used to beat your grandmother. I mean, not just regular beats. If she talks anyhow, I beat her, but only with reason, unless she mess up. And uh, so she's disappointed in me now. It's okay. Uh, our love used to be great. You want our love to be like, it used to be great. Well, you have to learn how to shut up. Okay, now, did you see that? Did you cringe? Did you become angry? That is how when we, when uh, most uh, uh, most guys pay dowry, most guys. I'm not saying, please, guys, uh, take this with a pinch of salt or something. Seriously, it does not apply to every man. But since this is what I saw mostly, uh, that's how I um, I kind of actually just be, I was a tomboy. I didn't want even a relationship because I didn't want to face that. I didn't want to go through that. Other uh, suffering that. Uh, black woman uh in my eyes what i saw when i was growing up as a young girl as a teenage overworking Makio, these people will pay dowry yes and then you go to the you know to the guy's uh parents you know you, you they, probably the guy has a house in their up country and let's say you got married when you're living maybe somewhere in the, in the city like nairobi so after some time, the guy would be like, okay, I need to work in Nairobi and you have to go to our country to make sure the farm is uh, cultivated, to make sure the farm animals are, you know, well kept, to give birth. And the guy would be left in the city enjoying life and going to a job which is paying 2,000 Kenya shillings per month. And this guy will show up in Christmas with 1,000 or 2,000, what he has saved all year. I saw this for my cousins, from my uncles who left their wives, went to Nairobi to look for a job and come empty-handed at the end of the year. I don't know if you, you feel this. You know what? I have been in a relationship and I know how it feels to have children, uh, take care of them. Uh, and... I'm lucky that I have a man who actually helps with the paying bills and, you know, with the kids and stuff. 
I'm imagining this person uh, that in up country you have to cultivate, you have to raise the kettles, the whatever chicken and feeding them and you know there's giving birth and then there's dealing with the relatives that don't like you and stuff. I saw all that as a teenage, as a young girl and I was like, mm -mm, this is not what I want for myself. And I said, you know what? Uh -uh. In my head, but at that time I didn't even have a, an idea like, oh, I want to be married by a white guy. I didn't even know, like, you know, I didn't know anything from up country. I was like, eh, whatever, this takes me. And then time comes to go to college. Um, my experience as a black woman in college, mm, from up country, when you go to college, you find, you know, uh, people who are, you know, you, it's a mixture of people from up country, people from high class, uh, you know, or be, like, you know, people with money, rich people, poor people, middle class and stuff. So me was that girl, you know, with, uh, you know, let's say 2,000 or 1,000 for three months for to take care of me, to buy, you know, lotion, to buy beauty products, to buy, uh, to make my hair. To, so I didn't have money like in college. And um, when I entered in college, I was doing secretarial, yeah? And I didn't know much about men, to be honest. And I was just there. Uh, Secretary forced me to, you know, to look like a woman. <laughs> As I told you, I was uh, more of a tomboy from up country. You know, you see this? This is what I was I was wearing in college and I'm not going to class. When you're going to class, you have to wear, you know, like a woman and, you know, make your hair and blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I started uh, in college for like one year and then there was this competition, modeling competition. And one of uh, my, sec I think, uh, upper class secretary or, you know, class some woman told me, oh my God, Apollonia, you height, you know, you're, you're, you're slender, you know, you look like a model. Why don't you try this uh, modeling uh, thing that is coming up for the college? We are actually looking for a Miss KTTC. I used to go to a college called KTTC. If you know it, it's near UN. So, uh, or UN or United Nations, you know, where there's US embassy in Kenya. So, I used to study in that college and, you know, they said, oh, try and then you know I, I talked to some friends of mine like who oh, you guys do you think i can oh my god beauty beauty who beauty beauty tomboy or what, what are they looking for so i had just you know i i, I had to go to, like let's say uh, i went to internet and just uh check how how is it to be like a beauty queen because i'm from the village i mean come on this, i don't know the shit like i'm a tomboy i'm from the village so uh, okay i need a dress i need something sexy i need something bikini i need you know <laughs> I didn't know this stuff. So my friend, I'm talking to my friend and, you know, she said, okay, okay, let, let's, let's run to the, you know, to the market and get you some stuff, you know, some cute stuff to wear in the Miss KTC and whatever. Guess what, guys? I actually was uh, chosen the Miss College, Miss KTC of that prestigious college from the village. to. Now, after I got that, um, what do you call, after I got that title, that's when I, I started seeing actually men interested in me. All of a sudden, after some event, you know, the beauty event, I all of a sudden became beautiful in front of black men's eyes. This is how I used to look then. Let me put some photos, you know. So, and then I was shocked, like, these guys did not approach me when I was not Miss College. Now I'm Miss College. Mm, somebody is interested. So I, I took it also not not so easily, you know. Um, I, I had I had not uh, been used to dating, and so I finally had my first uh, black boyfriend, you know, that I met in a college event somewhere. You know, even it was not even from my college because I did not want to date from my college because um, uh, everybody wanted to date me, and I said so many no because you know. I'm new into this dating, whatever. So I, I got somebody from a different college, you know, and it felt kind of comfortable that I did not have to share the same college with this person. You no, know, they go to their college, you know, we meet maybe in the weekends and whatever. And, you know, that was my first experience of dating a black guy. Now, let's like fast forward, you know, like what, um, how did I end up in, uh, you know, how did I start dating a white person the first time I dated a white person now because of modeling and all this stuff and um I used to do like sales and marketing and uh, I used to work also in a beauty parlor and stuff and most of our 
clients, you know, were like uh, white people and I got to interact with white people. You know, I, I used to work in a gym sometimes. I got to interact with white people and um, I started comparing like how it felt dating a black guy and how it felt dating a white guy. And there were, you know, there were some things that were very obvious. Now, since I've given you my whole history of a black man rejecting me until, you know, I was called beautiful by some pageant, there are also some other aspects that um, African men have, you know, like, it's my opinion and not all of them actually and you know now it's 2022 uh women are uh, 2023 and men you know they have seen the world men have traveled you know kenyan men and you know black men so you know you know much but i'm talking about uh my time when i was dating like i'm talking about you know 10 years ago actually no 13 years ago or 14 somewhere there so here is what I found. Uh, here is what I liked dating um, white men. It's first of all, uh, it was just because they are from different culture. I found it easier to talk, and there was no like misunderstanding. Not not even misunderstanding. There was there was all like commonality. So they will be talking about something totally different, and I'll be talking something totally different. And then when we combine our stories, everything was interesting. So it was really interesting from to hear from me and I was interested to hear his story from where he comes from. So it was more of the, um, the cultures, you know, like listening to the cultures of each other. That one really uh, kind of pulled me towards the white side and whatever. Okay. Also, it was always my dream to live or, uh, to, uh, live or you know, stay or go outside africa you know just for adventure and see how people live in europe let's say like in the us or in the asia you know it's still my dream too i've been to europe now i live in moscow for you know almost what 12 years and i want also to explore later but you know what it was always my dream to live outside africa just you know to experience how how it is there so that also made me go towards you know um entertaining and also wanting to date a white guy the other thing that, uh, you know, brought me towards the white white brothers or white cousins. <laughs> oh, God. It's, um, uh, when I compare um, dating the black, uh, you know, the African men, I don't know why I didn't feel most uplifted. I felt like it was like kind of chore and I felt like, I, um, you know, like I was supposed to, you know, like like controlled in a way, like you know what, I'm the man, you know, I'm the your 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 controller or your dictator, you know, or you do what I say. So that's what that's what I, I kinda felt. I didn't feel like it was partnership. I felt it was like, you know, there's a dictator and then you know I have to follow what they say. If you you, you tell me not to do this, like, like yeah, I have to ask for permission, like, hey, can I go see my friends? Can I go plate my hair? You know, I felt like I needed to ask for permission to do stuff. You know, well, uh, when I was dating, like, you know, uh, white people, it's uh, it's more of, it was more um, kind of freer, kind of open-mindedness. Some I don't know if you understand me. Um, it was more of a discuss, you know, like, let's discuss about this problem we have. The other one, it was, this is the solution and that is what we are going with. So whether you like it or not, follow. that is the same thing I saw as a young girl that the man of the house uh, made decisions and there was no compromise there was no talking if the man said you're not going to see your friends you're not going to make your hair sorry you won't go to make your hair so i could not stand that and yeah well pulling me to these white guys okay the other thing is that um let's come to, to bed stuff now i don't know if uh, sex is stigmatized in europe than it is in 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 Africa. Oh my God! In Africa, um, sex is not a comfortable thing to talk about. And when you're in a relationship, you're going to have to do it. And when I did with my African boyfriend, it felt wrong. Like this guy would be just you know, pa 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 out, forget. I don't want to look at you, see you. Uh, that was that was brutal. Um, 
it's my experience you know i don't know about other people please comment below you know if you did date, you've dated white and uh, black and you know what is your you know if you have uh, things like this that differ. for me uh I, I i i didn't feel appreciated in the black side i don't know and you know there are other things you know you want to do while having sex or whatever you know like go down on someone and black men don't go down and if you like that sorry but they want you to do it but they won't so the other side you're more welcome they'll lick you from toe to to the to the face if you if you want so it's it's these things that you know pulled me you know towards uh white people and um i'm not talking this like uh, generalizing these are just the men i met then you know the young guys i met then because now you know things are different you know uh people have different experiences that was my experience and i'm actually talking about my experience you know yeah so i think you know those are you know my most things that um pulled me to towards having like wanting to date a white guy even if i didn't um really plan to for me it just came to you know cuz the place i worked and whatever and interacting with you know black and white so i had um what do you call i had a, had to, i had like uh examples you know and my decision you know ended up being a white person you know so so that's what i can really say about um my opinion when it comes to why black uh, women uh date outside race you know why black women uh, prefer dating black uh, white men or why black women um you know date outside it does not mean we hate black uh, race or we hate ourselves ourselves I think mostly it means uh, it it comes from experience what have you gone through what is your story because you know what mostly actually is child trauma child trauma is really bad and uh, what you go through what you see when your child is pretty much what affects uh, the outcome of your life mostly and i think so even like i i deal with so many messages of women like asking me uh, please can you find me a white guy and i sympathize you know i don't like uh, dismiss them and whatever cuz i kind of feel them you know i kind of feel like maybe she has actually experienced black person and she doesn't like what she has experienced and maybe that's why she thinks uh maybe a uh, black white man is the savior now my conclusion um white men are not saviors like um don't expect to date a white guy and uh is going to be better uh than any black guy you met you know you, it's uh, it's diff- it's it, the only difference is just the skin color men are men some men are good some men are bad you know some men beat women white or black some men don't some men know how to treat women some men don't some men uh take care of their children some men leave their children you know so um don't um I, my my advice is like don't think like dating a white race it's going to you know uh to fulfill the fantasy you have in your head because you know what at the end of the day we are all human race you guy at the end of the day and uh, everybody has their uh, you know shortcomings Mm, don't expect perfection because you know what most of girls they want to come you know to date a white guy thinking they are getting perfection you know thinking they are getting you know a nice guy and then they end up being abused mentally you don't even have to be beaten like sometimes just mentally you know abused financially abused you know in all sorts you know um there's so many things that you know make us human and um one thing i've learned uh, by dating a different race is that we are the same <laughs> actually there's no much difference at all uh we run uh, red blood in our ve- in, a, in our you know in our bodies and we are actually the same and that's my advice uh, when you are going to a dating site or you are looking for love look for a man to love you any man 
Asian, Chinese, I don't know, uh, Philippine, I don't know, African, Nigerian, you know. Look for a guy who is going to be nice to you, not a skin color. Because I think it's... Um, because whites look like uh because whites have been portrayed as superior people things uh think that uh, life is easier when you're dating one or whatever but life is what you make it actually uh, and i feel like um just just wish for a nice guy that's all don't even put color like you know th that can't like i'll say like i i, I met um met my man from uh online dating yeah and when I joined there, I did not join for to for white guy purposely. I, I just wanted a guy that you know we will you know we will be partners. And I, I you know I didn't want a you know I wanted a nice guy, and you know I ended up where I ended up I ended up with a Russian guy. So ask God or pray for for a nice man. So guys, that is it for today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's not too long and I hope you learned something in it. I hope I was irrelevant. You know, I, I hope you understood me or something. I hope I didn't get out of the topic. But anyway, that is my experience. Uh, that is how I grew up. That is how I ended up um, with a white guy and whatever. So, guys, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, wait for more videos like this. Because I think I'm uh, anti-age now. I, I think I can, you know, talk about some tough topics. I think I have some knowledge about some tough topics, you know, and I, I, I'm thinking of going to this route, you know, vlogging, some vlogging, and then, you know, some tough talks today's, you know. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a comment or if you have a story you want to tell down there, please tell us a story down there or, you know, comment about something. Say, say something. So, paka paka.